Hi there. My name is Kevin Levy and this is a review for Bicycle Guider. Today we're looking at the Rad Rover by Rad Power Box. This bike has a 750 watt rear hub motor. It has a 48 volt, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hour battery. It's a pretty decent sized battery. It has Tektro Aries mechanical disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors. Pretty standard. Shimano Acera gearing, 7 speed. It has really large 26 by 4 inch Kenda Juggernaut tires. And the really good thing about these tires is they have built in tire liners. And on these bikes, it's, it's kind of a, a hassle to take the tires off. Especially with this bike, you'd have to take the, um, the fenders off, then the tires off, change the inner tube. So it's nice to have built in tire liners so you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, I can tell you, having bikes in the past with Kenda uh, puncture-proof tires, they really do help a lot. Um, it's not to say you couldn't get a flat, but you're definitely going to be more protected than usual. Um, this bike has um, front and rear lights. I actually forgot to put the front light on, but it's got a front and rear light. It has built-in um, fenders front and rear which is really nice uh, especially if you consider the fact that this has you know kind of dual sport tires I'll show I'll show you all this in a second but the fact that you could probably go on trails you know some light off roaning uh, definitely through some dirt potentially some mud and it's nice to have these fenders they definitely <clears throat> help the dirt from kicking up on you um, which is really nice to have. Um, it's got a quick release seat a pretty decent sized seat um, pretty standard, but it's a little bit wider than usual. It's got some nice cushion to it. Um, it's pretty comfortable. Um, it has front suspension with preload and lockout, but uh, and it is adjustable, um, but it doesn't have rear suspension. So if you wanted to, you could potentially put a suspension seat post on the bike. That would definitely make it a little bit more comfortable. It's got these really nice um, hand grips that are kind of a leather feel almost, and they've got the, the flat spot for your palm to rest. Um, really comfortable, really nice. Um, it's got a really nice display uh, with a lot of different uh, statistics that it shows, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and it's got a bell, which is kind of cool. Um, you don't, definitely don't buy a bike because of a bell, but it's got the bell um, integrated into the handbrake lever, which is really kind of cool, and it's a good bell. It's a really strong bell, which is really nice. Um, it has um, a dual chain guard, which is really cool. Um, so that is, it has um, like two sprocket covers, if you will, and the, 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 the chain is in between the two of them. So that helps it from being derailed, you know, becoming off the chain. It also keeps your, your pant leg from getting caught in the chain. So that's really nice. Um, so let's take a look at the bike. So here is the 750 watt rear hub motor, and it's built by Rad Power Bikes, not um, you know somebody uh, else. Um, so they consider it to be a very high torque motor. Um, I can tell you that it has some decent torque. It says it has 80 newton meters of torque. Um, not the most powerful bike off the line, but you know it definitely has some power to get you moving. Uh, not a very aggressive bike though. Um, more of kind of a, a moderate. Um, you know amount of torque um, Here is the dual chain guard. I was talking about you can see how the chain actually goes in between the two So that's a really nice touch. Um, it has some really nice nice pedals. I mean sometimes you get some kind of plastic pedals. These are some really nice um, You know aggressive sport pedals that are um, you know, you know aluminum um, It has an aluminum frame. Let me show you a little bit of the detail. I mean it has some really nice welds I don't know if you can see this, but really nice welds. I really like the, the styling on it. You know, it's got this two-tone black and gray. Uh, obviously it says Rad Power. Um, it's really nice, you know, and it's got this really cool emblem on the front. I don't know if you can see that. It says Rad, Rad Power. Here are the 26 by four inch Juggernaut tires. And you can see they have some pretty good dual sport uh, tread um, and they're really big. It's hard to tell, but I mean, 26 inches is really big, you know? 
It's got these, here are the suspension forks, and you can see it's got the preload and the adjustment knobs. Here are the 180 millimeter brake rotors, Tektro Aries, pretty standard. Here's the 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery, and it's got a, a little keyhole here, and you can turn the key and you can slide the battery up. There's not a whole lot of room to get it out, but you can certainly get it out. And what's cool, uh, we'll show you here in a second the display. What's cool is when the battery's on, you can push this little button. I don't know if you can see that, but it's uh, it lights up. The battery lights light up. To show you, uh, you know, your battery percentage. But that's in addition to this nice digital display, which has, you know, very large um, speedometer. It has your um, battery percentage. It has odometer. It has a trip odometer and it has the number of the amount of wattage that you're pulling it also shows you the different pedal assist levels which is nice here are here's the gear shifter for the seven speed shimano acera um here are those hand grips i was talking about it's nice to just kind of rest your palm on it and if you're you're doing the throttle and here's a Here's a, it's a twist throttle. And if you're doing the throttle, it's nice to just kind of put your, uh, your hand to rest it on that, on that, that, that flat part there. Here's the bell. Um, it's just a nice little bell and it's actually built right into the hand lever, as I said, pretty cool. And, um, and I've seen this on a lot of, uh, a lot of bikes. It's nice. It's a nice touch, you know, and you can buy a bell, uh, and they're pretty, usually pretty, um, flimsy. Um, to buy a bell like this, you know, could cost you upwards of like $40, $50, believe it or not. Um, and uh, when you're on a trail and instead of saying, you know, on your left or, you know, coming up and it, it kind of startles people, it's nice to have a bell like that. And you can just, you know, far in advance, uh, you know, just ring the bell and people move out of your way. Um, it's got, like I said, lights on the front and back. Um, unfortunately, I forgot to put the front light on. I just realized that right now, but it's got front light and back light. Um, what else? Here are the fenders. Now, a thought about the fenders. Very nice fenders. I really like the fenders. Big fan. They're really classy looking, and they definitely help you um, keep the mud off your body. But one thing I can say is the bike comes with the rear fender on, okay? And that's pretty cool. It's nice and easy, so you don't have to put that one on. But the problem is, to get the front fender on, you got to take the front wheel off. And the average person is going to take the wheel off with the bike upside down. It's really hard to take the bike the bike off the wheel as opposed to turning the bike over and taking the wheel off the bike so you gotta take the wheel off the bike which means you gotta flip it upside down and to do that you gotta you know flip it backwards with and you're gonna wind up scraping the um the rear fender like i did unless maybe you put down a towel uh, i don't think you want to put it in your family room and do it on the carpet but you may want to put down a towel or a blanket uh, and help you from doing that um, it does have a nice kickstand which is pretty cool um, not all the bikes these days have kickstands. It's nice to have that. Um, and the bike is 69 pounds. Again, 80 Newton meters of torque. And um, it's got, um, you know, these bolts to undo the back wheel, which is pretty standard. Um, but what's really nice is it has these quick release uh, levers for the front, which is really nice. It's really easy to take the front wheel off. Um, again, you're going to have to flip it over and you might have to deal with um, dirtying up the, or scraping up the uh, fender. So be careful about that. Um, so that's about it. Um, hopefully that gives you an idea of this bike. Um, a lot of people compare it to the Himaway Cruiser. And I can tell you that it looks very similar. Um, and it has similar, you know, statistics, uh, similar componentry, similar speed and all that. Um, but now we're gonna take a ride. So stay tuned. All right, we are on the bike and we are cruising around. One thing I forgot to mention is it has five, is it five, five pedal assist levels. Um, and it shows right here on the display and this little lever over here to the left, which I forgot to mention, you push this mode button and it turns the bike on. You push the mode button and it also switches between trip and odometer. Um, and it's got this up and down arrow for pedal assist levels. Let's cruise around a little bit. 
One thing that is unique about this bike is when the pedal assist levels are off, um, you don't really have as much power as you do when the pedal assist uh, level is in like five. So when you're at a dead stop, for example, and you're in pedal assist zero, the bike barely takes off. When you're in pedal assist level five, the bike takes off better. So um, I don't know if that's something that really they meant, uh, or that's just my own personal perception, uh, but it, sure, it certainly seems like it has more power when it's in pedal assist five. Um, so it's got throttle only, which is what we're doing right now. And you've got some nice pull and some nice takeoff. And, uh, you know, again, here's a little bit of uh, grass for you. Not the most, um, you know, it's not really a, a really aggressive uh, off-road vehicle. You could certainly take it off-road like we are right now uh, and do fairly well. And you know, here's some, uh, some, some mulch or bark for you. And it handles that really well. Um, but it's more of a, um, a street... Um, you know, light park trail cruiser. Um, I wouldn't necessarily be taking it off-road very aggressively uh, with a lot of, um, you know, divots and rocks and hills and bumps. It's not really meant for that. Um, you could probably find yourself on a nice fire road or a nice light park trail. Uh, I think it would be great for that, you know? Um, here's just a little bit of, uh, like, dirt gravel for you just to show you how it does. And I can, you know, turn pretty easily without losing any traction. And uh, you know, handles this kind of stuff really nice and easy. Obviously it handles grass. Um, I'll try to find a little bit of dirt for you. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely dual terrain or multi-terrain, you know, dual sport. The uh, front suspension definitely helps give you some cushion. Uh, the tires. Not very aggressive off-road tires, but they're not street tires either. They definitely have some traction, uh, some grip, some tread. So you can certainly go in the dirt. Um, I'm a fan of the bike. I think it's it's a really nice big bike. It's very comfortable. When I initially got on it, I thought, wow, this is like really a big bike for a larger person. But when you put the seat all the way down, it's not that bad, you know? So, well, I think this bike is probably ideal for a person Five, five, eight to six, two. I definitely could see somebody taller riding it. I could definitely see somebody on the shorter side riding it. Um, I put it again down the seat all the way down. Granted, it was uncomfortable for me. I'm six foot, but I rode it pretty easily. And the, the good thing is that the, the handlebars are up pretty high. So if you're on the shorter side and your seat is a little bit lower than the handlebars, for me, it's, it's pretty close to the handlebars right now. Um, then the handlebars are up kind of high and it just makes it that much more comfortable, you know? So. Um, so pedal assist levels one through five, I can say pedal assist level one doesn't do a whole lot for you, right? I'm, I'm putting it in pedal assist level one, um, and it just, it doesn't do a whole lot. You feel a little bit of pull, you know, a little bit of propulsion, uh, but not much, you know, I'm actually like actually pedaling, uh, you know, definitely feeling the push of the pedals against me. So I'm definitely giving it some, you know, some pedal power. Um, and I'm going only like seven miles an hour right now. So pedal assist level two not a whole lot of difference um, you know I'm actually feeling it in my thighs and my quads I'm actually really pedaling you know pedal assist level three you definitely get some nice pull um, I definitely feel the bike taking off so big difference between pedal assist level one two and then three three definitely gives you some nice push and some nice propulsion um, it's a nice acceleration so um, yeah I mean we're cruising pretty easily here um, at you know 11 miles an hour I could certainly go higher in the uh the gears and get up to yeah we're now we're at like you're just at 12 or 12 miles an hour 13 miles an hour 14 15 right um 16 and then you get up into pedal assist four and you have a nice little bump in speed um not a huge difference from three but a nice little bump let's see pedal assist level four takes you through the grass really nice and easily Pedal assist level five, obviously um, the highest level. It definitely gives you a nice boost. So between three and four, not a big deal, but four and five, a big boost. You know, I'm like, I'm flying through this grass right now, like no problem, right? Um, I'm going like 16 miles an hour through the grass. I just showed you that there's definitely some lot of, a lot of power in uh, pedal assist five. Um, that's a lot of fun. And then throttle, um, 
doesn't have as much torque as I would expect it to have for 80 Newton meters. Um, it doesn't have a lot of low end torque. Certainly when you're going at a decent clip, uh, like we were just going 15 miles an hour, I hit throttle, it dropped down to 13 and now it's accelerating back up to 15. So it just takes a little while to get going. Uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of torque, but it's got some decent to high end, you know? But the good thing is if you're going up a hill, um, because it has gears, um, some of the some of the bikes uh, these days are just kind of a single gear, a fixie. This one's got gears, which is really cool. You got seven gears. If you put it in a low gear um, and you put it in, you know, one of the pedal assist levels, you can certainly go up a hill pretty easily, you know? Uh, you just have a lot of low end uh, pedal power. So that combined with the pedal assist, um, you know, you're probably going up a hill pretty easily. Okay, we're doing a little speed test here. We're in pedal assist five, gear seven. And we're at just about 20 miles an hour. And it's just a nice cruising speed. All right, we're gonna try to go up some, uh, like a little dirt trail here. And we're gonna test out the, uh, the low end here. So we're in gear one, we're in pedal assist five. And uh, we're going up this pretty easily. And this is probably a four to five percent grade, and it's about ready to become like a six or seven percent grade. So the beauty of the gearing is that you know you put it in a good pedal assist level, and then you have low gear, and you can pedal, and you can get up things. So we're going up this um, pretty easily. Again, this is about an eight percent grade in the dirt, and uh, just handled it really nicely. So. All right, so now we're going to come down a little bit. This is a little bit of aggressive little trail here. Let's see what the, see how the uh, the uh, shocks do. So you got some really good grip and some really good brakes on this uh, on these tires. And uh, yeah, I mean it handles the dirt really well, you know. So let's try a little bit more dirt. See how that does. So pretty decent hill climbing capability. Um, especially when you put it in the lower gears and the higher pedal assist levels. So just another little, uh, little dirt trail for you. This is the kind of trail this bike's meant for. Again, not really aggressive trails. Like even the one we were just on a second ago was probably a little aggressive for this bike. This is really more of just like a, a beach cruiser, uh, you know, park cruiser light trail cruising right this is hard packed dirt a little nice little easy trail not very steep not very bumpy and this is perfect for this you know and these tires just handle it really well so this is kind of what this bike is all about right here you know street a little bit of gravel and then this kind of a trail and uh speaking of gravel i see some gravel over here we're gonna check that out let's see how it does that was convenient all right See how it does in gravel. So this is some loose gravel right here. And this is not bad. I mean, you can see I'm like, I'm kind of carving here, like a, you know, S, S swerving, and it's handling pretty freaking well. So, um, definitely does grass, definitely does dirt, definitely does gravel. And, uh, yeah. So, that's the bike. Hopefully, this gave you some nice insight. If you're considering purchasing one, overall, I'm a fan. I like the bike. Um, I've now ridden, I think, 20 electric bikes. Um, just about every kind you can imagine, from folding to motorbike style to mountain bike style to street. Um, hub motor, mid-drive, full suspension, hardtail, no suspension. And overall, it's a nice bike. I know that it's considered one of the most popular bikes in America. It's one of the most widely sold. I can see why. Overall, it's a high quality bike. Really good componentry. Uh, very comfortable. Decent amount of power. Decent amount of range. Anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, please like and subscribe.